Oh, <laughs> didn't see you there. But I bet you've seen the best looking shirt on the YouTube right now. That's right, baby. It's right here in stock now. The truck we are working on today, our GMC shirt, limited edition. Once they are gone, they're gone. You better be fast because we've only got one on the shelf. Also, where'd she go? Boom, baby, GMC sticker. Boom, baby, S10 sticker. Boom, baby, new Puddin's Fab Shop patch. Boom, baby, Puddin's Fab Shop magnet. Slap that on your old shop fridge. Slap that on your old workbench. Slap that on your real refrigerator so your wife sees it and loves it. We've got our limited logo there and some air fresheners. You can get her in the winter ice cinnamon sandalwood new car or new linen. Besides that, we're doing a sticker pack right now. So in this new, oh, I forgot that one. Rust flakes available now. You know, when you work on a car, you're going to find you a big old box of rust flakes. Hell, we just found them on this GMC not too long ago when we pulled the carpet out. Surprise. And then we have this available as a sticker pack. That gets you the new magnet, the Rust Flex, the S10, the GMC, and then a couple of the oldies, but goodies. Now, besides that, guys, our numbers on the website have been incorrect. So we've got Datsun shirts sitting here. We've got International, Torola, Yeehaw, Travel Awesome hoodies, and more. The S10 shirts. Apparently, we forgot to add XLT on the website now. The OG Shop shirt, the pre-order. Boom, there's our leftover sizes in stock. Wheel Hop Wilma, and we have right here the mystery shelf. What's a mystery shelf, you ask? You can call it a mystery. I'm gonna call it the you get what you get and you don't throw a fit. So for 10 buckaroos, you're gonna get you who knows what. That's a Model A shirt. That's a love tap. I see a Chris, or not a Christmas. That's a Halloween one. There's a Christmas one. There's a Yeehaw first Christmas edition ever. Uh, we got a couple hoodies in the mix. We got some crew necks in the mix. Sausage wagons, white t-shirts, who knows what's in there. There's all kinds of stuff mixed in. You get what you get, you don't throw a fit. I cannot guarantee if you buy two or more of those sizes, you don't get the same shirt because we tried our best to mix them all in, but if stuff goes out, no guarantees on those. You get what you get, you don't throw a fit. We even still have some kiddo stuff. Now that's enough uh, hem hawing about merchandise, guys. Thank y'all for the support here. Y'all know it's helped us grown to uh, the point where we're at right now, so I cannot thank you guys enough. However, please enjoy this video. A little swap of the wiper blades. I did the S10. Let's get on our GMC, which is what we are supposed to be working on. Mostly yesterday and today anyhow. I think I just broke that. Wiper blades are such a pain in the hind end. Cut your frame in half, no problem. Change your windshield wipers, I, I don't know if I can handle that. Might need to call an expert. Aha! Windshield's cracked. This thing has an appointment on Monday for a new windshield. Well, I prepare these for a little paint, first of all. Calm down, Bitsy. It's a good way to spin that so you can clean up a round object. It's also a good way to get it spinning a million miles per hour. Let's see what happens. Go, 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 go. That thing's gonna be spinning till the fifth Sunday. Woo, shake it like a salt shaker, huh? Just take that engine and ammo straight to bare metal. Uh, primer's overrated. And after I do each piece, I'm just gonna bring her out here to the uh, powder coat oven. We got the sun out. Let them do the, the wine dangle there and dry. The old alternator, well, she's in rough shape. She ain't, she's working, but she don't look like she's gonna be working much longer. We're gonna get a new one on it. I just ordered one, it's cheap enough kind of thing. I also had to order the proper belt for up there, so we'll wait to throw that on in here. We had got the carpet in, but we didn't get her trimmed out. And kind of same on our headliner, we got it in, but no of our none of our trim around it. I know this ain't fun, but that's where we're gonna pick up right now. Lock and load. I found that hole already. That hole may line up, but that one's not even close. We can make it close.
I just drilled the hole. How'd I miss it, huh? Come out, come out wherever you are. Got it. Get that screw back out because apparently this is supposed to go on first. Doing crap like this is not fun. Almost as fun as playing grab ass with S10 carburetors. Get you a one inch for that one. Trying to work my way around and figure out what we're doing. Uh, like turning that one upside down. We need to give it the flipperooey. Trying to figure out my seat belt combos that I purchased here. Here's what I've kind of sort of figured out. This is the kit from the retro belt. Not super impressed with it, but it is what it is. We got a middle belt there. Of course, this one's adjustable. I'm gonna lay them forward. These little ones barely stick up through. They had actually came in these plastic sleeves and I just pulled them out the plastic sleeve. It hangs out right there. And then I'm gonna show you on the other side how to get this in. I was trying to check all that as we were doing these. I still don't have our back piece in. And door are plastic on that side. They install perk near the same. Just line them up and drill them. Hole lined up good there. Oh yeah, I forgot. We got a little hangy hook on this side. Yeah. Ha <sighs> <sighs> ha. I got it. Woo. She's way down in there in the swamp land in Louisiana. In case you need to hang your uh, button up, your old pearl snap over here. Mm, I gotta leave in about 20 minutes. I smell like I've been in the sun a little bit. Uh, I'll probably need to take a quick shower, which means unfortunately we gotta call our quits here. Mm. Did not get as much done as I wanted. Hey, the S10's running. What else could you ask for? Take our seat belt. Comes with the little bracket set up. One side's longer than the other. You wanna pay attention to that. It's gonna sit in there like that. Shorter side of the bracket. We need a turn 90 on the bottom. I don't know this is the proper way to do this, but it's how it worked on the other side, so we're going to, it's what we're going to do. Yeah. But you put some stank on it, we got to cut off that extra, them extra threads. Just cut your seat belt, no big deal. And that is going to go right in there. You can see that lines up. I'm gonna use the factory bolt, put a washer on the back, and then we'll just do a nylock half inch nut. Solid. Up top, factory bolt back in that. I come with some uh, shorter ones. The shank on it's a little shorter, so I'd like to have the little extra play. Of course, pop that fancy little cover on and she's looking just dandy. Get them out of there. You don't need them. Safety instructions are overrated. All right, we are seat belted up. Uh, these things do have extra slack, more than I care for. However, once you adjust it, you can just boop, buckle right in, got a nice shoulder strap. Next up, we're gonna look at our seal plates. I should overlap or trim. Uh, uh, kind of snug it into place. Take our little poker deluxe. We're gonna fill around for a factory hole, see if we can happen to find one. All right, what if we just have a quick look-see? Holes right there, give me a little mark right there. Now, oh, there it is, way down low. Hmm, that may be too low. I don't think our plate will go that low. How low will you go? Be careful doing that, I just blasted through and bent that. It looks better than the old corroded ones. How in the heck can we not find the hole? Yep, found the hole up there. It's down low too. Our seal plates, they're the custom two piecer. I go like that. And we got to drill through our other seal plate.
That sure cleans that up a lot better. Got that panel screwed in, kick panel. Now on this one, we've got a little gap between there. Maybe hard to notice, but you can see a little bit of our primer down in there where we patch the floor. So I'm gonna trim this extra piece of carpet uh, left over from trimming these ends and kind of tuck it up in there and it should kind of disappear and also not stand out as much as like red primer does and it kind of curves up and then i'm gonna just slide that little piece down in there and boom now you see a little bit of carpet instead of primer looks a lot better a little redneck interior pro tip for you lock that panel down and that's not going to allow that to move that looks good kick panels are in next step we're going to get a radio in i ordered one of these retro sounds these things are kind of updated. They have Bluetooth, supposed to have good output on them, uh, but they look retro, they look old. They come with 19 harnesses, a bunch of brackets and hardware, some plastics, and plumber strap. Warning, secure the unit, blah, 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 blah. Apparently these have uh, different faces to choose from. So there's the face that we chose, and Let's see, I'm assuming that goes, I guess it just slides on there. Don't read the instructions, we'll just guess. We got a ribbon cable that sticks out there. Simply pop that on our face plate and put your slack in there. And that should slide into our little end pieces, about like so. You wanna come with some screws for that? Uh-huh. Found the box that came in and it says right there, caution box. Uh, this box contains small screws. Use caution when removing content. I don't think I obliged. Oopsie daisy. I may have drilled the hole out of here bigger and put the small screw I have in there. If I had opened that and screws were falling out, I think I would have known. I don't think it came with the screws. Supposed to have four, but we put two. Two don't hold it, four never would have. I'm gonna attach these brackets on the side but they are full adjustable, so I think to really lock them in, we need to go pull the uh, face plate, or the bezel. Pull our screws. I think our little trim ring right there needs to back up. Please be good to me. All right, that'll work out with a little bit of patience. Now, what do we got on our hands here? Trying to just kind of roughly mock that up and figure out where these brackets need. And I'm just gonna do them right in the center. I thought when I bought a radio that said it was for this truck, it was gonna be for this truck. I didn't know it was gonna be a 19 piece. Just a little bit of assembly required. Next, I'm just using my eagle eye to center that up and mount our little knobbies what a pain in the butt next we're going to get our harnesses uh spliced on here this harness came with two blue wires one's your power antenna one's to go turn on your amplifier if you got one of them we got neither so i snipped them and i wrapped them up in tape we need three wires yellow is your constant 12 volts red your 12 volt key and black is ground on here yellow is your 12 volt key black is ground and somewhere we've got orange with a constant 12 volts. Yep. Get these heat shrunk down. These are the ones that shrink down, which is nice. They're not the fastest things in the world, but they do usually do a pretty good connection. And now, because that's the three-piece adapter, we're going to have a whole lot of extra wire, which I guess is all right. I'm not a fan. Had I been paying attention, I would have just cut these ones here and uh, wired this straight in. Yeah. Anyhow, I sure hope this looks good, works good, and functions whatever once it gets in there, because it's a little bit of a pain. Boy, I sure hope that's that's going to work with them knobs. Taking this on and off a couple times uh, to thread that on, it was, it was crooked in here, so I put one of these spacers on this one over here to angle the radio more. It looks like it could use a little more, but if it'll work, I'll take it. Huh, that ain't going to be nowhere close to working these only sit down there so those got to be way back great radio or bezels now been in and out and adjusted about 1400 times oh hallelujah i'm not gonna get super picky here on yeah there's more of a gap on this one than this one the radio's still a hair crooked i didn't plan on spending a whole morning installing a radio so i don't give a damn 
and thank goodness because that looks so much better than a uh aftermarket radio got her powered up here trying to figure out how to use it i crawl up underneath the bash i did put the back strap on it uh got her all wired in plugged into our antenna got all of her ducting back on underneath there i had to pull off it was quite the task retro sound found her on the bluetooth oh oh oh, oh. all right she's got a radio thank goodness bluetooth right there off your phone Looks pretty good, kind of matches the style of the truck. That means it was worth all the pain that we just put into that. Our steering wheel was just mocked up before, so we'll actually put a lock nut on that. And with that, we pop on that. Next up, our shifter. Got that knob all cleaned up. Oh, she's sparkling. Of course, we got a spring that goes down in there. And that, I think, sticks into that. How's that work? About like so. And I gotta shove that down. I don't know if it pins from the top or from the bottom. I actually think it pins from the bottom. Yeah. Uh-oh, our spring turned. Here goes the next task that should have took about a minute. I was about to turn into a lost spring inside our column. All right, guys, I went out, robbed the spring out of the other column I had out of this the old one. And I was putting the spring in there wrong. There's a little area where you put it down in there and it kind of slides in there. Tap that up from the bottom. She's spring loaded now. We're shifting. Now the devil's in the details here. It's our little turn signal knobby. It is pretty filthy. We're just gonna give it a good little scrub down. I'm trying to get most of that off, but we don't wanna break that sucker neither. I'm hoping who I give this truck to in a little bit, he uh, he works at a factory. So he gets off work dirty like I used to do a lot. So we want this truck nice, but I don't want it too nice that he won't drive the dang thing. I'm gonna, if he don't, well, he'll whoop me. If he don't drive it, I'm gonna try to whoop him. So he has to whoop me. So he feels bad about whooping me and then he'll drive the truck. With that on there, the, well, it needs cleaned up again in there but we need very little in here now. We need our back trim piece and our dome light reinstalled. I'm waiting to do that until we're 100% done so our light can hang there. Mm, really, the big thing is this. Uh, so Cheyenne Pickup Parts had donated a lot of this wood grain dash pad, all the plastics and stuff you've seen uh, for this. I was unaware and he said he forgot to tell me, which hey, it happens. Uh, but these don't stick out far enough now for our window cranks. So you either got to extend them shafts somehow and or you got to swap out the window regulators. So to do that, we may have to go out to the salvage yard at some point and grab some of them. I'm not quite ready to do that right now. Our alternator did come in yesterday. So let's, let's hop back up to the front, try to get that figured. Got our Poon's Fab Shop wind chimes. Got our new alternator. I'm gonna try to figure out how this goes together. We got these instructions, but it's kind of got this like exploded view. And exploded views exploded my brain. Alternator, bracket. We need a four inch bolt. This is the shortest one. Now those, those are four and a halfers, I think. Mm. Hold on, gotta go through this one. Good golly, Miss Molly. Through that, through that, through that. No, it says alternator. Through that, through a one inch spacer, through this, but I don't know which way, and then a nylock. Step one. <laughs> so this pivots around to that. I guess that gets the quarter inch spacer. Three inch spacer. Four and a half inch bolt. Goes there. Oh, then that goes through one of our seven sixteenths and into the head. I see, I see. And the same thing goes on right here. And that one goes through two and a quarter to the water pump. Hold on. Hold on. I'm, what in the confused? Oh, we're gonna have to take a bolt out of the water pump. Got it. And then that goes there. That's the little one for though. Maybe I grabbed it on accident. This one here. Nope. Maybe that goes there. Could be. If so, we're putting a washer on that one. 
Shoot, that actually looks pretty slick. That bolt out the way, dropped it. It's fine. Well, crap. We built this bracket back in the day when we deleted our AC from this side. I'm fairly certain that's where one of our bolts needs to go for the uh, whatever. Now, however, on the back side of it, we're gonna have a 7 16th spacer. So we could sh shave that spacer down the thickness of that bracket, which is about 3 16 and I think we'll be good. This is not going well. I'm just dropping everything. Oh, crap didn't, no. Crap didn't look like it was gonna line up to me. Oh, that's good. Anyone notice this pink stuff that's coming out from underneath the bumper? Well, that baby's flowing like the Red River from back by the transmission up to here, so that's new. We like that, more leaks. More problems. No, no, it's gonna line up. I ain't been wearing my eyeballs as often. And I can't eagle eye as good as I, I do with them. Put those two tighten down. You can see our gap back there, like I said, about 3 16 I'm gonna try to slip some washers in there. More than likely, I'm gonna drop them. If I was a betting man. It was a valiant effort. I'm gonna try again starting with putting our washers on this one first. Oh yeah, she started. Those all tightened down nice. Luckily, our washers in there look like the right thickness. Uh, let's get our belt. Oh, crap. Crap, crap, crap. The belt's gonna go on the very back of this rig, which means it's gotta get around this belt, which means the freaking power steering pump needs loosened up. Probably means all this needs loosened up so we can put that belt on first. Here's one. Number two is not gonna be so easy. As far as our alternator goes, this is the length belt that the thing recommended, the instructions. And to get to it, I just knew it was gonna be easiest to pull the alternator back off and all the bolts out of our power steering pump. Sometimes it's just quicker to do crap like that and get it done instead of trying to fight it and be all finicky with it. There, that goes off your crank pulley to your power steering pump. I come over the water pump and that's a no-no. I love old trucks, I love old trucks, I love old trucks. If you say it three times fast, it comes true. Uh, yeah, that's not what we need. Even if that belt was short enough, that bolt says, uh, ahead of that one right there would rub that. So I'm curious if we ain't supposed to have a different pulley here that steps back. I don't know how it can step back any further than that though. For another pulley no it can't because that can't come from underneath there up to a pulley i was very impressed with their alt uh, their ac bracket alternator bracket i don't know what the hell we got to do here tighten the base of that alternator actually if i pull that tight with that adjusted about right there that would clear down through there i think it's tight but it clears we're sacrificing a belt here so this is going to hurt some y'all to watch We'll use this as our measuring belt from now on. Pull that tight there. And we're gonna pull that. And we'll pull that baby tight where we can see. That tooth right there. Get a little mathification in this situation. Right at two and an eighth. That belt was 56 and an eighth. Subtract that, we need uh, right at a 54 inch belt. Got a belt ordered. Good news is once it comes in, we get to uh, take all of that 100% apart again to try it and hope that that one's gonna work. And if it don't, well, we just get to keep on repeating that process as many times as it takes. I love old trucks. I love old trucks. I love old trucks. Our carburetor machine has that little hump dinger in it right there. And I point that out to you because our breather has the same uh, hump dinger in it. See it there? 
course, I reckon we could take that hump dinger out of there. Then we could reposition this, maybe. Because it don't sit on there no more, thanks to our new uh, setup. That would really open a can of worms, I forgot, because we have a flat spot on the back for the HEI. What if? <laughs> oh, about this caddy air breather for I don't even remember what, and it was too big. But this thing's got all the room. We could leave that caddy breather on underneath the hood. Kind of looks ridiculous. I like more of the factory looking breathers myself, but the motor itself kind of looks ridiculous. I mean, we got an old crusty motor with orange valve covers, nice custom accessory bracket tree everywhere. Primered water pump as everything else is painted. We could just add to the ridiculousness. So we can run that and or we can cut that, making it a stubble lub. We can cut this one in, uh, down and see. It is a pretty ugly factory breather. So we're not really hurting much here. On the top, I just followed the edge of that uh, little stamping there. Of course, it was gone on the bottom. Uh, <laughs> let's go see. Stubby Wubby's still gonna hit our heater hose here. I'm gonna have to rework that heater hose or it's gonna kink. Yep. She needs to trim down just a hair. And uh, the gentleman who's going to help us with the fence project, I think I hear him here. He's coming to put eyeballs on it. Tighten that down before I forget. And then I've got to go meet with him, I do believe. Set that on there, and uh, I'm not mad at how that looks. I thought I was going to hate it, but that goes exactly onto that quadrajet because it's made for it. And that don't look bad. Plus, this makes cold air. That's the intake for the carburetor. This is a true cold air intake. It's gonna suck all the cold air straight from the AC. It's settled, we're leaving it. Quick little deburr. I have not turned the compressor on today, as you can tell. I ain't got no air pressure. Beautiful. I forgot about the wiring part of our alternator. I disconnected our battery. You don't want to drag that, because that's going to be a hot 12 right there. You don't want to drag that around your motor. Oh, got a hard vacuum line right there. We need to pull that wire underneath. And that may give us enough slack to this side. Oh, oh, high step. There we go. I don't look the prettiest sticking through, but it does reach over there, which is good. It means no extending, uh, rigging up our wiring. Speaking of that, there's our old hot wire from when we were having to jump start this rig or hot, hot wire it. That whole set up. Well, we got a new column now, so we can hook up our factory wiring again. Just mock that up so we can uh, know it ain't flopping. Need to put some cooling in this thing. We had drained it to pull the radiator when we did the HVAC. So we need to top it off. We ain't started the old girl in a while. Hmm, we might get her started and try to get her to the lift where we can see what's leaking on the transmission. Make sure I put our drain plug back in. It was in, but it wasn't tight. We got a whole lot of this good green stuff, so I don't want to waste none. Uh-oh. I think the guy from the fence company's here now. Thought he's here earlier, but he wasn't. Got these babies covered in good mud over there. That's perfect for our new carpet. Get you some custom floor mats. Save this old girl to start for us. She ain't been started in weeks. Fire right up, idle beautifully once you get fuel up to her. Nice and quiet, sounds good. Oh, bring it on back. Oh, don't hit that. Oh. Try to wiggle through here. Wait till y'all see the 4x4 
four chassis we put this truck on so we can get these 37s on it. strong man my beautiful wife requests to speak to me hello we gotta be super close yeah just barely we got her whoop now guys sitting in here <laughs> sitting in this beautiful interior this feels like a totally different truck holy cow i just man the great pudini made that spring that disappeared in the column somehow roll out from underneath the truck. Ta-da! When you're good, you're good, because I ain't got a clue how I just did that. Boy, I could just imagine hopping in this thing, take your beautiful wife, take her to a nice dinner date because it actually has a decent interior. Running beautiful. It's looking for a transmission leak. Uh, well, that's good. That's our little retaining thing that no longer retains. But besides that, it definitely looks like that was coming from right in there, which we've already played grab butt with that part before. Besides that, we always leave a nice little puddle right here from our oil drain plug, uh, not sealing. Guess what I got right here? Yeah, we're gonna just try to give this the quick swaparoo. We could probably try to put a shop back on it somewhere to provide vacuum, but I would rather not. Here we go. That, uh, one, that did not look very good. Two, that smells an awful lot like fuel. I'm gonna drain it. I know, I, oh, well, I forgot I put some sea foam and other crap in there too. It's all right, we'll still just drain it. Drain it. She's got the cheap oil filter on her too, and I did get a Wix. So there's a couple good reasons why we'll just change the oil since we're here. Thank you to the subscriber who sent out our drain pan. And thank you to all of our new recent subscribers. We did the S10 giveaway video, and I said to have a chance at winning, you had to be subscribed. And we picked up a lot of subscribers overnight. Uh, I mean, I only had to bribe people with a truck to get them to subscribe, but we appreciate y'all nonetheless. I'm gonna be like Oprah trying to keep them now. You get a truck, you get a truck, you get a truck. Uh, uh, audience member 23, look underneath your chair. You get a yeehaw! Ain't nobody getting my damn yeehaw over my dead body. Got a new fancy filter filled up with oil. Put a little oil on your seal. You want to wet that bad boy. And you want to crank her down by hand. And get her nice and tight. Or as the Germans say, good and tight. Yeah. Next, around all that grit and grime, just polish that oil pan. Worry about all that build up on the side. That's insulation to keep your oil warm in the winter. An extra hot during the summer. Snug that down. And hopefully, that right there takes care of our leak. As far as this thing goes. Oh, hold on. Found our new leak. Looks like maybe our oil pan gasket. Either way, that bolt's not staying in this piece. So we need to try to retain that. But at least we're not leaking right there, like I thought. There's a little bit, but not enough to do what that was. And previously, we weren't getting any puddles at all underneath the trans fluid. So, what's going on here? Lines look nice and dry. It is wet on top, and then comes down to the edge. Uh, now, I don't think that dirt dauber's leaking. It looks nice and dry. So, what could be leaking on top? There should be a rubber or a seal right there for her dipstick that's nice and clean is that a vent or is that oh you know we got our detent cable right here and i'm sure it has an o-ring down in it i don't know up here sure saturated like it's running from up here somewhere i'll kind of clean on her here and see if it might be something we just got to kind of watch and keep an eye on and now that we know where we can actually pinpoint and tell What's leaking here? Come to find out a quarter inch bit will fit in your little uh, die grinder. I took one of my taps and I snub nosed it as much as possible. Just ground her down on the bench, bench uh, sand, sand belt thingy. I 
I don't think this is going to work. <sighs> we need something to hold that. It's a decent idea anyhow. If you don't want to tap, we're going to try something new. Took a quarter 20 bolt, cut the head off, and I ground us a flat spot on that side. Stick that up in there. And make sure we can put our uh, keeper on and pivot it up into place, which we can. So I'm going to try to drill and put a roll pin in that. Something else you could do. This just needs to tighten up some. You don't got to smoke this thing to Alabama. It just needs to retain that. Uh, if you did not have means to do this, drill that sucker out as much as you can. Glooper full of the JB Weld. Shove your stud in there like that. Let her set up overnight. We're through the stud. And we went out the other side of this little housing. Right there, up out back there. Dropped a roll pin a minute ago. Just got a roll pin set and I've got a claw hammer. I've also got a I don't give a damn built in. So if that thing strips out, well guess what? I don't give a damn. Tap, tap, tap. That's a pretty smart idea right there if I do say so myself. Should have just done that from the start. That's a pretty smart idea. <laughs> uh, careful tightening it up. Hey, I did hit dead center on that thing, didn't I? Sure did, and I also snapped it. Second time's a charm. Used a stainless steel bolt that time and a nylock. She's good. Since I'm down here, I'm gonna pop this off. Look up in there. Make sure she don't look wet, which she does not. Someone said our smoking could be this going out and then occasionally you suck fluid up through there into your intake. That's your vacuum modulator shift to my bobby thingy. Well, if we were sucking that up there inside that, should be wet. And since it's not, I don't think that's happening. Here you go, last push, push of the day. Our battery tray is rusted away. And, you know, it would make absolutely zero sense to have all three bolts face in the same direction. So that one comes from the front side. And to get it, I think we're going to have to pull our grill. Because getting to them from back there would just be absolutely too easy. Kind of glad we did that. Just because our AC lines, this one here, it's just barely rubbing that edge. That is a sharp edge. There's a lip there. And that little bit of shaking and vibrating like that as you drive, that's enough to over time cause a leak right there. Just a little bend in it and she clears perfectly fine now. There's that pesky bolt we're after. Get out of there. That's what I was worried about. That one's uh, non-existent. Or what it mounts to is non-existent. Oh, and we got one that comes up through the uh, uh, fender wheel. Oh, and our coolant overflow hooks to it. Dang. Thing wasn't going nowhere. Out with the old. Get all the debris. Hey, a good screw. Uh-oh. There's some buggered up wiring. Oh, okay, we don't even have a socket for our, our blinker. So we probably want to stretch them wires before we uh, put in whatever. We got a black, a brown, and a blue to stretch here. So that light down there must have a running light and a turn signal in it. And now that I think about it, I have not function checked all of our lights on this thing. All this little crap really adds up on these trucks, guys. And where this truck's going, uh, my buddy I'm giving it to, I guess I really ain't talked to y'all about that. Maybe we will as we end the day here in a second. I don't want him to have to work on this thing no more than, uh, hopefully none. Hopefully it just makes a good driver around here for him. But stuff like blinkers and running lights, we definitely gotta have it all working for him. I'm gonna hit her with some Pot County wire loom. Calm down now, making her a show truck. Now we got plenty where we can splice our socket on over here and then boom, reach underneath that. That'll be way easier to fix now. 
a little running light that goes on the fender. Go ahead and pop us a new bulb in it and hope that our wiring's good on. Pop her into play. And then look at the new battery tray. Start that bottom one first and it looks like we got a really nice fit here. Apparently I spoke too soon because there ain't deadly there. I mean, there's a nut plate down there, but it ain't even close to being lined up, apparently. Just had to loosen up the one from the wheel well. Now we can suck them all down. Put a nut on the bottom side of that one. And no, we did not fix that there, uh, but... I don't know, that thing's gonna be super solid. That's gonna hold that side. This sits on that. I think it'll be all right. It's gonna be better than that anyhow. Go ahead and drop them in a newer battery here instead of that one that's about four years old. <laughs> oh, she actually clamps in now. Definitely gonna need a longer positive, so that's fun. We'll get to swap that out. Little crap's adding up, but we don't care, guys. Uh, we're gonna keep pushing through get this truck ready to get it out of here part of the old crap guys Especially when you find one in a field and you don't really know much about it You go to do something like replace your rusty battery tray and find wires ate up and missing and you go Oh crap, let me add that to the list It's one of those things that sometimes it seems like the list will never end But if you keep pushing through the stuff, you'll finally get the list knocked out Good morning Sick kid makes for a rough night. We gotta have the truck at the alignment shop at eight o'clock. We're gonna be late no matter what. I'm trying to get it ready to go. Mama's with the little one, so I gotta take the other kiddo. See how she does. Gave her one pump. Started a little rough. Yesterday I started it once. Uh, crank, crank, crank. It didn't start, I gave it one pump. Then tried to start it and it did good. This time I did it one pump as it was cranking. Y'all know carburetors all got their little finicky what makes each one happy for starting when it's cold. We're gonna figure this one out. She's idling good now though. Here. I got some boxes to grab over at the garage at the house. Got the wheels over there. And we'll be on our way. Stack that in. And oh, guess what? People who said I should wasted all my time notching it. Well, if you still use a lowered truck like a truck, which is what I do, pretty sure you bolts would be hitting the frame right now over there. It definitely would when we hit a bump. It's just a good thing we got a C notch. Whoa. It's almost like I knew what I was doing. That's a pretty good little load for this truck. Exactly what it's perfect for. She'll cruise 70 with the load on. I've really learned with this 2.8, it don't matter if you give her about half gas or full floor it, you go about the same. So you might as well just give her about half gas and let her do the little bit of work. She's no powerhouse, she don't get you there quick. I'm pretty sure this thing would lose a race to the E-Haul and it's got a big box on the back and a four, four cylinder. <laughs> All right back in action i'm gonna start with pulling our battery lead this morning it's got one of them fancy ends on it got the little stubby lubby uh looked at our oil pan no uh no leaks this morning still not sure where that sucker is leaking at i need to cut that end off but i can't get my cutters to it snip I mean clamps would go through down there. I was hoping we could just pull that through. Oh, just bumped my head. I cut her into a couple pieces and I got it. Now we get to fish back the new one. Where is the new one? Now it ain't the funnest thing to do, but feed that back through all them clamps. And then we're gonna tighten her down here, try to keep it from hitting anything. That clamp right there, I actually pulled out the oil pan. That old red wire's a little thinner than that one though. 
So that did make her a little easy to get her fish back through. Yeah. Put that one in our clamp there. And then we're gonna have plenty of slack to run over here and no longer pull tight. That's gonna be way better. Let me actually show you. Maybe I'll bring the camera that away. So this needs to go right there. And we can figure out our ground next. We'll say there's definitely more work here than I realized. Can't get work done around here neither. Spend some time going over the plans again with the electricians over there on the add-on, trying to get progress over there. And then I just had to run around and gather some medicines and stuff for hot rod. She is not feeling good and uh, mama sat in there with her as she's sick, but I had to get her some medicine. We gotta get that baby feeling better. You know what the old? Where's the new? Ha ha! a spot right here on our water pump we're gonna try to use. Tight! Ugh. Piece of hose. And then our cable. I'm actually gonna go down and zip tie it along with our power. That way, if we ever get a short in our power lead and it starts to get hot, it's got a ground directly to melt to. Use our zip ties and do our little wire separator trick. Run that all the way up. Looks pretty good. Let's figure out our two grounds. Trim them down, strip them, and slide on our heat shrink. Don't forget the heat shrink. Twist our joint together. Get that fire nice and toasty on there and try not to burn up our wire, but we gotta sacrifice a little bit. You get that baby full soldered. Slide that heat shrink up on there. That heat shrink's got the glue in it. That's gonna help hold that connection or the heat shrink on there, I mean. On our positive, do the same thing. Nice little heat shrink action. And then our wires here, I'm gonna zip tie them together. Where they kind of run together. Our two grounds, I did take them up in some black and they can kind of just, they can just kind of tuck down there. Looks a lot better than what we had. One, we didn't have a tray. Two, the battery was up here. Three, the leads were so short it was pulling the battery that way. So, with all that being said, can't complain about that. Went to a parts place last night. Got me a couple different belts to try. I'm not gonna make y'all watch all this because it's the same thing. Just swap, swap a Ruiz until we find the right one. Hopefully one of the two are found. The tighter we go that way, the more it pulls that belt down on our adjuster. So what's that mean? And if we go up in there, we're gonna get close to that. Man, this is a pain. I mean, our belt's, our belt's tight there. It's just gonna hit that one, one bolt. I'm getting super duper fast at swapping these. Well, we're tight there. That bolt head we were hitting, we are now not. And it looks very tight along that bracket, but clearing's clearing. A little edge rubbing every once in a while never hurt anyhow, did it? So for me, that belt is 7530 part number, 53 and 5 8 long. If that helps someone else, who knows? I just want to try to tighten her down and fire this thing up and see if, uh, if she's quiet. Just playing, I'm a dummy. I'm gonna pull that tight. We're still trying to hit this uh, bolt down there to tighten our, our swivel. So if I pull the slack off of it, and then from where it'll hit that over there, we need about right in there, and then a good tighten from there would be about perfect. So we need quite a bit shorter still. I love old trucks. I love old trucks. I love old trucks. I love old trucks. <laughs> Looking at it a little more, I took our bolt out of there that we we're hitting. If I go to go up that way, so we clear that, we still gotta clear that one, then guess where we hit? Right down here. However, if we take that bolt out that clamps down our adjustment, and we take this over here where it needs to be to be tight, we clear over there, we clear that one there. So basically, if we could just pin that or clamp that some way, we should be good. And I'm half thinking of just drilling a hole through that sucker and put a bolt in it. You pull it tight, put your bolt in, it holds it. If you ever need to take it off, just pull that bolt and slot it back. So pull that baby tight and you can just barely see any daylight through this to that where I was happy with it. So just about right there is going to be good. Lock that baby down. And like I said, we're just going to try to put a bolt right in here somewhere where there's enough material. I don't know if I'm getting far enough away from that or if I got to come further down here, actually. 
You better move down some or we'll have the same problem. Don't mind that little hole there. Just act like you didn't see it. You can get as many uh, metal shavings in your alternator as possible. That's real good for it. I remember when I took that apart, I took the long bolt out in the spacer that I always dropped from the water pump. I set them up there. Made sure not to drop them this time. I'm trying to put those back together. I just spent over 30 minutes looking for that damn spacer. And I ain't got a clue where it went. Another bolt thing's gonna work. See, we don't really have slotted adjustability, but as long as that's what we need, it should be happy. Put us a nut on the back and tighten it down. Just tightened down our two other bolts. I'm hoping when we move the truck, maybe, I don't know, I shook the truck. I've looked underneath it, on top of it, beside it, all around it. Uh, 30 minutes, can't find it. We're gonna call that good enough for now, though. Hopefully the spacer shows itself. Ultimator wiring hooked up. Put our lead on. Let's go for a start. She fired right up. I didn't even touch the gas. Don't hear no squealing yet. Don't hear no rubbing or see no smoke from stuff. Oh, I never put our AC belt back on, did I? That's all right. We're just worried about the alternator. 14.4. She's charging. Yes. Oh, victory karate. I thought if we fired that up and revved it up some, this piece may show itself. Still ain't got a clue where it was hidden. <clears throat> Forgot one ground. One for the truck. That's not important or nothing. Some more of that good green stuff. I just got a text saying the S10 is ready to pick up. And my plan with the alignment shop was to drop this one off and pick that one up. Slick happened to show up at the perfect timing. Got some steelies to take to drop off with the sandblaster. He's in town. She ain't got a hood, so she shouldn't get hot on us. And I really ain't drove this thing super far. And we look at 40 PSI. Good, good time to mention. I did put oil back in it when we lowered it back down yesterday. All right, I'm gonna cruise along here, guys. And unless there's some kind of scary worry, uh, I'll check in when we get there. Here's a check in. Uh, nothing's going wrong. In fact, she's doing really good. Shifts nice. Feels pretty good. Our alignment has to be pretty close on it. And whoever guessed on the line in that steering wheel did a pretty good job too. Speedometer's about, oh, I don't know, probably three miles per hour off. That ain't too bad though. Well, she made her here, no problems. Main problem is looking through this old dirty windshield. Transfer the steelies, and we now we, we made the swap, C10 to S10. She's aligned and driving fine. Uh, cleaned up around here. It was an absolute mess. It's been a good amount of time doing that. Slick actually came over, did a little uh, buffing on the driver's side. Driver's side paint on the S10 just is not the happiest. It always looks really good on camera, uh, but when you get super close, there's some flat spots here that just don't want to polish out. And some of this crap we can't get off the trim. Uh, you can wipe some of it off. We're gonna go pressure wash it at some point. Some of that crap just keeps coming back. Now this side, she's pretty well cream puff. Uh, not perfect, but pretty good. So we did a little more polishing on that, trying to get it ready for the lucky winner. And then this morning, uh, I've been waiting to be able to go get this. Finally got it, obviously. I don't know where my phone's at. It's gotta be close to 11 o'clock already. <laughs> don't worry about these old meaty gals here. Y'all know how I said that S10, people said I didn't need the C-notch as a waste of time. Then this one, they said the same thing. Well, if we didn't have a C-notch, that axle would be hitting right now. But instead, I just drove all the way home with all this weight in the back and hitting bumps and everything else, she didn't bottom out once. That's nice. It's weird, using a lowered truck like it's still a truck. You need the notch, guys. Now something else some y'all were worried about after I uh, slid it down or slid the rear end forward in that second channel video, if you missed that, I put out a video centering up the wheel well because uh, when we <laughs> closed up our bed gap, then our wheel needed to move forward and people were worried it was gonna bottom out. I don't know if y'all can see that, 
but it ain't bottomed out uh, kind of same thing hitting bumps and everything if that was going to go forward and bottom out it would have done it and it did not so we are gud we're good to go there all i'm gonna say is those are six lug and those are 37s and that's a little bigger than the uh little four-wheel drive we got in the salvage yard out there right now that has six lug wheels that only has like a 30 inch tire on it okay little monster truck nah i don't want to give it away too much never mind i never said nothing curiosity killed the cat you know what i'm saying and the driver in our here had the heat on on the vintage air first time testing that uh, defrost vent all that stuff worked awesome felt good and we did not have any blinkers so see y'all think that's rust little did you know that's really just an access hole okay got a socket uh i don't think it's for this but we're gonna see if it works i mean it went in there and turning it it locks in so it may not be for this but if it works it's for this and there's our wires i extended we need 1157a style bulb that baby's ember because we got clear lenses so that's your turn signal running light turn our headlight switch on to running lights hey that one works that one works shoot even that one works three out of four ain't shabby Like a fine lady named Mercedes, we're gonna strip it. Trim these down. Woo, playing with fire here. That truck should be grounded, so we do not want those touching that truck. Whoa. We know our black is our ground, but our other two here, that's our running light, and that's our turn signal. So we wanna verify those. We're going brown to brown and then yellow to blue. And there's a running light. <sighs> no extra protection. Pop her in and we got lights. Woo, baby. We are not getting no flashing. It is uh, on, it's brighter. So it's giving power there. Both dash lights are working. Same thing, that's also brighter. We'll pull that bulb and put our other new one in just where they match. Maybe. Y'all may not be able to tell, but the colors match a lot better. I don't know how it looked on the camera, but the bulbs are different colors before. Uh, I'm gonna go around and put bulbs in all this stuff. A little pro tip for you. You mess with a lot of old turds like I do. Uh, when you need bulbs, go to the parts house and ask for a box of them. They keep them in the back. Uh, a lot of the 194s, 1157s, and 1156 are the main ones like on these old rigs you use. Uh, so be sure to, well, it's not much more money, if any, to get a big old pack of them opposed to uh, buying a pack out off the aisle. That's your little pro tip. Consumer pro tip of the day. Budget friendly shopping with pudding. Ooh, these ones look dangerous. So I gotta say, I'm quite thankful. It's pretty amazing for the amount of rat's nest that we pulled out of the dash on this thing, that none of that wiring was chewed up underneath there. Uh, which, I mean, we got rid of most of the HVAC anyways, wiring. Oh, better get safety glasses before I get glass in my eye. But all the other wiring on the truck uh, has seemed to work really good so far. We had our one thing up front chewed up and so far that's been it. <laughs> yeah <laughs> to get it to start working on that side all i had to do was attach our ground back here i already did the driver's side oh, it's trying to work we just got dirty connections there we go kind of pinch our little things down in there together Boom, boom, bang, all the lights are done. That don't rhyme. Boom, boom, bang, all the lights work the same. Pulled our old flasher out and uh, put a new one in. 
That's what I like to see. Righty. She looks pretty good. We are pretty close to having this thing where I want to have it. Mm, really? We just need to charge the AC, put the hood back on. So Monday, glass guy's coming, get us a new windshield. I talked to him about swapping out the window regulators and uh, his, his opinion was to get new ones, don't go try to salvage out the salvage. Uh, so I ordered all that stuff from LMC. I don't know when it's gonna be here, hopefully the first of the week. So that's gonna be our last thing to kind of get buttoned up in there on the interior is where we can get our cranks on. And other than that, it's ready to give to Randy. So, hmm. I guess our transmission leak ain't coming back, I should notice or mention that I noticed. We haven't had a leak yet. So I don't know if I spilt something over there. I don't know what I did. I don't know if that thing puked some out, even though it was just sitting there not running. I don't know. That's interesting. So if we're going to charge the AC, we need some Freon. I don't have any. So I guess we're going to have to go find some. That smells good in here. Must be that new air freshener you got. <laughs> that thing does smell good, don't uh, it? I got in here and I'm like, smells like a girl's been in here. It don't smell like a girl, <laughs> yeah, but sandalwood. <laughs> that smells like a proud My, man. The, the hippie girls I'm used to smell like that. <laughs> All right, so I come over here and I seen Bill was at Slicks. So we're gonna go to the parts house, get some Freon. Uh, I was trying to take the S10 and it don't wanna start. And the only way I can even try to get it to start is by flooring it. And it kind of wants to stumble a hair. And last time we seen that problem is the ignition module on that El Camino. So. We are going to get ignition module while we're at the parts house too. See if we can. Lift the back of your truck. I don't know why you kids just lift the front. Dang it. It's a pre-runner. Yeah, that's right. Uh, that thing don't even get off concrete. <laughs> Dang, speaking of S10, look at that little cream puff, Bill. Yeah. Old man's got style. <laughs> Made it back in no time with rocket ship Bill driving. I think we got to pull vacuum on this for, uh, I don't know. 35, 40, 45 minutes or so. She needs pumped out. Hook these back up. She's still holding vacuum, so that's really good. Still vacuumed down from when we vacuumed it the other day. So as we let that do its thing, uh, we're gonna go look at our S10. I was thinking our ignition module, like I said, come to find out, there's either a seven pin or a four pin. If I was a betting man, ours is gonna be the four pin. I bet seven pin had something to do with throttle body fuel injection, something like that. I've been wrong before though. Change the name of this truck to the I Can't Win S10. Cause I, no matter what I do, I can't win with it. I think that coil wire was popped on good. Of course, taking that off may just popped it off. Nope, that wasn't it. cap two screws hold the uh ignition module and i'm sure it's very hard to see because it's very hard to get to sure enough it's gonna be the four pin sure enough we just broke that tab because it's old and brittle kind of like my fingers sure enough we can get it pulled out though i don't know that's our problem or our culprit but uh, I thought it was flooding guys, but I let it set for about 45 minutes to an hour earlier this morning Never hit the gas. It wouldn't start and then just now I mean that was another 45 minutes or so that it had to sit out here still don't want to start well to the salvage yard We go. I really uh, Well, we're getting ready to give that truck away and I hate to give a truck away that don't run <laughs> Y'all's welcome out what the hell's going on. So we're gonna hop in the Torola where we can drive up into the salvage. Uh, I did some reading online. I don't think you can just use a seven pin in place of a four pin. Uh, it's looking for other signals to control timing and blah, blah, blah. So hopefully we'll get one at the, at the salvage. <laughs> squeeze out, Bill, squeeze. I bet this is it. Winter, winter, chicken dinner. Only problem is, apparently I forgot our uh, tool. So there's a four pin. We just gotta figure out how to get it out. 
got us a vent. I told y'all we need one of them too. I'm gonna go see if I can find some tools tomorrow. We'll be back. I'm gonna throw some mud on Bill. I thought he was joking. <laughs> you know what's good about doing it this way? When we go to reinstall on the good truck and we drop one of these, <laughs> we'll have extras. <laughs> to get her? All right. We don't know if it's gonna be any good or better than the one we're using. But, but it was a four pin, huh? She's a four pin. Sweet. She's also original GM, never been replaced. Uh oh. Oh, I forgot it's been raining. We can go this way if you wanna hit a real hole. Yeah, this is square box central back here. This is oh, that's Maddie. We're committed. We're committed. Oh, <laughs> I should have known. As we got to that corner and we got, uh, we got soft. Down. I don't think we're gonna back out of this. This will be the first time we've ever got the tow roller stuck. She's trying. Yeah. Come on, baby. Woo! We did it. <laughs> Can't see nothing out the car. We got us some redneck tent. That sucker was deep. Uh, we were shoving the mud with the front bumper. That's what had us. <laughs> My sprayer don't work. <laughs> Do what? We got a little dirty today. Gave her them old muddy tiger stripes. Cleaned up in our distributor real good. Clean this one up. You wanna lube her up, Bill? Lube it up. Dabble do ya? Oh, I ain't used that stuff in a while. You can tell that's old. <laughs> oh, old and chunky. <laughs> Made in the USA, it should last forever. We pop all that together. Our one plug wire came off. Another one did, I kind of guessed on them. Yeah, be tearing up some, stuff, Bill. Yeah. That crap goes together, all hooks to the breather. That also hooks to the breather. Well, I was hoping she was just gonna bust off. You ready for me to crank? I give her a pump, go ahead. We're gonna start right here with checking spark out our uh, coil. Ready? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's working. I could hear it. Tick, tick, Dude, tick. It was sparking, sparking hot. from there and to that hose. <laughs> yeah, it was getting sparked. That's what's weird about it. Just like the other day when it finally bust off, it'll just sit there and idle fine. It ain't even like it's trying to like warm up, if that makes sense. It's just something about getting it to bust off. I'll try that for now. Uh, one of the vacuum lines I plugged, it had a lot of vacuum going to it and I had it run into our air breather and I'm not sure it was actually supposed to go there so that would have been a big old vacuum leak. Now that it's ran the rest of the day, you hit the key, it's gonna bust off. So we can't really try it again until the morning to see if it's still being problematic or uh, good to go. So in here, we've been pulling vacuum for about 45 minutes on this thing. Got a few more minutes to go. I've had the truck uh, running to get warmed up. I've looked at our instructions here. It says 1.8 pounds. So that should be 28 ounces, right? 16 ounces is a pound plus 12 ounces. So we got cans here that are 12 ounces a piece. So that means we should have two complete cans. That's 24 ounces. And then we'll need four more ounces of that. 28 ounces there. And I grabbed our scale from the merchandise building so we can weigh that in. I've never had to weigh in free on, so this will be new. I'm gonna go ahead and put on our adapter. When you turn that down, it's gonna pierce that can, but it also closes it off. So it ain't gonna let it out until you back that back out. Shut our gauges off and give her the old swapperooey. The same hose we vacuumed out of, well now we're gonna send some refrigerant through. Those are still closed. We need to puncture this. We open her back up. Our little Schrader valve there, you see me purge it. That's to get any of the air out the line out where we should just be getting straight refrigerant now. I'm gonna turn the AC on in the truck so as it gets it, it'll start to, uh, the pressure switch will cycle the compressor on and then that way it'll keep sucking it. So we got refrigerant through our hose up to here but you don't, you don't get nothing until you open these up. So to service it, we're just gonna slowly open our blue one here and that should start to let our refrigerant in, into the system. See our needle changing. Well, I can't see refrigerant going. No, either. And I can't feel it. We're not getting refrigerant. Something's, something's wrong with our can puncher here. Now we're doing something. I 
may have not punctured the can good. I may have just barely teased it. Compressor just kicked on. So our little spinny thing there, we were watching, or I was purging it as he worked it, and it's just got a real fine spot where it's happy. I was trying to figure out what in the witchcraft was going on there. Can y'all see that sight glass? See it splashing around in there? Flip her upside down. Nope. Every last drop, we're relay relying on knowing we got 12 ounces out of that can. Yeah. You think that's her? Yeah, I feel it. She's nice and cold. Can we just get more? Bit, yeah, a little bit. Shake so every out. time that compressor cycles, if you really watch it, you'll see a little bit come through the sight glass. So we're just gonna get every last little dr drop out of here. All right, so she just cycled again. We're pretty, pretty convinced she's empty, empty. Close that down, which should shut that off. Now you want that open, because then you can't screw your new one on, because it'd be piercing it. So you want to tighten that down, making sure we're closed over there. Now we got to pierce again. We're gonna have to find the sweet spot probably again. They're kind of eyeballing it. About right in there, I think it was. Found it. Here we go, second cam. Well, I can tell you what's not good. I've got it set to the fan blowing a little bit on our dash uh, with it to AC. We know AC's on because it's powering to cycle the compressor, but we're not getting. I mean, I wasn't expecting cold air yet, but that's actually warm air. We damn sure don't want warm air. Found out our problem. Yeah, there's some cool air coming. AC was off, watch this. See that? Finny key controller. I should have left it alone, but I had to show you guys. God bless America. I'm gonna have to tape it to get it to stay on. Just a little piece of tape to hold it. I was going, Bill, how come we're not cycling? What the hell, it was just cycling. There we go. There it goes. Our last can here, we should only need about four ounces. The cold bill? Yeah. Just wait, buddy. This last four is gonna bring her home. Now that we have that purge, we're gonna weigh it. One pound point eight ounces. I wonder if we zeroed that, if it Pull would go it negative. Hit zero and zero that sucker out. And then as it loses, we'll go negative four ounces. If we do that, we're just gonna open up old blue, slowly. Like I said, I ain't done one of these systems in, I don't know, five, six years, I ain't done AC work, so I'm a little rough here. There's negative one, negative two. Oh, yeah, point. I think our valve's in a finicky place again. Yeah. It should be sucking more than that. So we got one ounce in it. I'm gonna try to purge it again. Spin that can I think our finicky valve's giving us the problem. Zero back out. We need to add another three ounces. Yeah. Well, we it was a pain, but we weighed that until we could uh, let it go through or whatever. I need a new little hole puncture thingy for the cans. Whoa, there you go, Bill. You signed the, the waiver? I ain't liable for accidents. See how she feels in here. Oh, nice and cold. Yeah, that truck stayed about 190. Of course, we ain't got a hood on it. Goodbye. Radio said goodbye. Uh, we found out our controller's not in good shape. We're going to have to get with Vintage Air or the people I bought it from, I mean, and get that swapped out because uh, that kind of sucks. Uh, but we're ending the date on, day in the shop on a good note. We've got cold AC in the old short wide.
dropped our last little piece of trim in, got our light cover in. Bill was here yesterday. He helped me throw the hood on where I didn't have to hub fit around myself. And we're basically to the point on this truck of what I can think is a windshield and our window regulator swapped out. And our glove line, our glove box liner, but I'm gonna finish throwing it in on the second channel video just cause it came in. The reason I'm recording now is my buddy I decided I was gonna give this truck to. His name's Randy. In fact, he was on the channel a long, long time ago. Y'all seen him from time to time. I know he's showed face during the Travel All series. Oh yeah, baby, right off. When we went and bought my first white travel all way back in the day, uh, he drove us down there. When the channel first started getting momentum a few years ago, I was always borrowing Randy's trailer. The most recent time he was on the channel was on the video when we were getting ready to move out here and we moved the junk cars from being out there in front of the shop over here into our junkyard. He's the gentleman who is driving the Kubota tractor. Chill hold, I ain't scared. So he's about to go right there. <laughs> randy is someone i worked with at the factory i think if you look up the definition of selfless you're gonna find this guy there uh literally do anything for his family and friends give him the shirt off his back and he's so giving that he hardly does anything for himself and he absolutely adores these trucks he loves these trucks and i had this thing sitting for so long and when i thought hey if i could if, if I built that for Randy, he would love it. And it was me thinking of building this truck for him that even started this build prior to that. It was just sitting over there. In the day in the house, I told my wife, I said, I need to build that truck for Randy. Two days later, I drug it in here because I had, a, had some motivation. What do you want, Hank? Keys to the van. I'm going to go those orders. Love you. Thank you. What was I saying? We are talking about Randy. So when I had the idea of doing this truck for Randy, it lit a fire in me. It's also why it snowballed more. So originally I plan on cutting this down and kind of getting it looking good. But Randy is a very busy man. He works hard, he provides for his family, especially here recently he has a, a newborn. And that's why this truck got heat and air is because I don't want Randy to have to feel like he needs to fix that stuff. It didn't have a heater core. So boom, now it's gonna have that. Uh, the reason it has the nicer interior is because it's for Randy. If it was for me, I don't know we would have done all that. Knowing it was for Randy too is why I also uh, allowed that company Cheyenne Pickup Parts to sponsor the interior because uh, I wanted it nice for him. Uh, and a couple other shout outs our buddy adam uh when he found out i was doing this for randy he was like dude i got a good column for you that's where the super nice column came from on top of that uh the steering wheel that's super nice uh our buddy aaron found out he was like hey i've got a steering wheel for that thing and then of course slick came over and he buffed it all out and did what he did and he wouldn't let me pay him for that he said that one's donated to randy and then top stitch taylor when he found out he said, let me throw a seat in that thing and uh, kind of spruce that up. And of course he helped us with the headliner too. And same thing, he wouldn't let me pay him. And that right there just speaks a little bit about what everyone else thinks about Randy. It's not just me around here, anyone who knows him, it's very mutual. Uh, this, Randy deserves so much more than this. Uh, and this is a little bit of the appreciation that we can show. I don't know if y'all can hear my voice, but I'm like, I'm getting a little excited. I'm a little antsy here. I, he he texted me and said he's gonna come over, I think, or he's supposed to. And uh, that's what I'm trying to figure out how exactly I wanna do this. I'm gonna act like I'm putting tools up. It's go time, guys. I just need to put some tools up real quick. Don't mind me, just putting up tools. Slam, slam. Come on in, help clean up shop if you want. <laughs> I'll be drilling over my truck. <laughs> been drilling over those things that you have. I always like to. 
this. Inside the same looks more than it did, man. I guess basically it is. Yeah, I guess for the most part. The last baby I held threw up on me. <laughs> <laughs> I think it'll make a good driver. Oh, yeah. It's nice enough you can drive it, but it's not too nice where you won't drive it. You know it's what nice I mean? It's enough where you drive it, be proud of it, but it's not so nice that you don't want to drive it anymore. I kind of lied to you. I said I had a park for you, but I don't have a park for you. I got a title for you. What's the whole reason I did this truck was for you, buddy. <laughs> I don't want it for myself. <laughs> I've got enough of them. That's why I texted you along the way and kept you up to date. <laughs> 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 kind of seeing what you what what you liked. I'm like, I kind of like this. What do you think? And you're like, well, I kind of like that. And I'm like, yeah, you're right. That looks better. He's been drilling over this thing the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> the, the only reason it even got pulled in here was because I thought about you. And if it wasn't for you, I wouldn't have done it. Holding on to the secret for months has been hell. I, I can't have you do that. Well, you don't have a choice. <laughs> <laughs> I, ain't, I ain't keeping it. It's yours, buddy. <laughs> Let me at least give the money back to you that you bought for the suspension. No, <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> I bought your suspension. Me, me and Rayston laughed about that for a month. <laughs> Adam donated that column for the uh, tore up column. Aaron had that steering wheel that's like perfect shape and he found out it was for you. He wouldn't let me pay him. Adam wouldn't let me pay him. Uh, Taylor put the headliner and did the seat. He wouldn't let me pay him. So I know having a newborn, this can be hard for you to, to get to yours. <laughs> so now you can have one, buddy. All right. Do you want that blue one? No, no, you're, <laughs> you don't know me, man. I just want you to, you know what I want from you? To drive the damn thing. <laughs> Don't tell me you won't drive it because the seat's too nice or something. If you'll just drive it, that's all I want. I was like, told Taylor, I was like, I'm gonna rip the seat and be like, now, now you'll drive it. Cause he's gonna be like, well, the seat's too nice. I don't wanna get it dirty. If you tear up the seat in five years, uh, we'll put you a new one in there. I got another seat. <laughs> oh, I thought you can do nothing to drive this thing. The, the reason it snowballed is because of you. I wouldn't have done all this for, like that, that's why I let that guy sponsor at the interior because I, I want you to have a nice truck, man. That's also why I did the heat and air. That was because I didn't want you to have to worry about pulling it, you know, pulling it apart, trying to fix it on a weekend or something. So, <laughs> and it was a free truck. Don't feel bad. It was given to me. <laughs> it was free to me. It wasn't uh, in this condition when it was free. Well, you can drive this one and now you can take your time building yours to the max if that's what you want to do. This is what I want. <laughs> just, I'm like, just drive it and don't take it apart. <laughs> drive it, just don't take it apart. I know when stuff gets taken apart over there, it may or may not ever get put back together. <laughs> that looks really nice. <laughs> you know what you could probably sell this thing for? Versus giving it to Randy, priceless. Do you, do you remember when I bought you those caps for your birthday? And I told you like two seconds after I ordered them, I can't even wait for them to come in. This has been killing me. I wanted to tell you when I brought it in. I was like, nope. You tell one person, that's how you end up in prison. As is, where it is, take it or leave it. <laughs> I think it'll make you a good truck, buddy. I don't think there's anyone else in the world who deserves it more than you. I don't deserve anything. Some people say you deserve everything. All right, well, there you have it. Uh, I kind of hit the camera, but I didn't want to just shove it in his face and be like, tell the world how you feel. You know what I mean? Uh, I just wanted to do something nice for him there. And uh, he was still telling me before he left, he's like, I feel like you're joking. Uh, I don't feel like this is real. I don't deserve it. 
and uh, yeah, not true. Randy deserves it. Uh, so thank you everyone who's been watching and supporting the series. Uh, again, thanks to Adam, Aaron, Taylor, and Cheyenne Pickup Parts for their little con contribution with making sure we got a tidy interior. Uh, I say little, that was a, it's a great part of the truck, so I didn't mean it like that, sorry. <laughs> Thanks for the small amount you did. No, thanks for the big amount you did on the interior. The interior looks amazing and having good parts for that makes all the difference. Uh, and thank you guys for just watching the video series. Uh, I, it's been super popular on the channel, but it's kind of to the point where once the windows get going up and down, it's done guys. There's nothing else I want to do to it. Uh, like I told Randy, I just want you to drive it. And I was really hoping everything would have worked out where I could have had the truck to him this week, full functional, because we had really nice weather this week. And uh, yeah, he's super excited to drive it. He tried to trade me his truck, which I don't want. He tried to, <laughs> I bought the lowering kit off of this from him and he put two and two together pretty quick. He was like, you gotta at least let me pay you back for the lowering kit that you put on it. And I'm like, it was so funny when we bought that. <laughs> me, me and Slick laugh for days about it. <laughs> we appreciate all the support here, guys. Appreciate y'all coming back time and time again watching. Uh, the shirts for this thing are available today. It's a limited time run. Uh, like I said at the beginning of the video, once these ones are gone, they're gone. So you better get them while they're hot. Uh, I'm going to set a couple to the side for Randy and uh, his wife. But other than that, couple for me of course i gotta have one uh what's on the website it's on the website once they sell out they're gone so you'll never be able to get them again that's because this truck is getting ready to go gone we get the windows fixed it's going to randy's it's his y'all may notice the s10 ain't in here and i think in this video guys i'm so confused on my schedule we were trying to get it running too and it was having troubles and i solved the troubles yesterday that'll be an upcoming second channel video uh just i had too much running into the weekend and now we've carried into the following week of what was supposed to be recorded last week. So fun part of being a YouTube YouTuber. It's not stressful at all. Uh, so that's it. I'm on the Instagrammer. I'm on the Facebook. I am on the Patreon. I, much other than that, I'm ready to go in. And uh, I will see you guys next time. However, do not forget, sitting on your ass won't finish your project. I'll see you guys in the next one. Oh, hey, good looking.